Okay, so today's special topic, we're going to look at Kangaroo 2. Uh, Kangaroo is the plugin for, uh, for Grasshopper. That's a live physics interactive form finding tool. Uh, it allows us to apply forces and counter forces that mimic things like gravity and tension uh, to basic digital elements, such as points, lines, meshes. Uh, we can find architectural forms that are structurally efficient uh, and behave as they may in reality. Uh, I'm going to start with a really simple example. Um, which is just something that'll get our feet wet with some of the some of the ways uh, of, of adding kind of basic forces to 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 some geometry on screen. So I'm going to start in my my front view as a matter of uh, in the front view here, and I'm just going to draw a polyline by grabbing the polyline tool, and I'm just going to draw an object that looks something like that. And then I'm going to bring that polyline into uh, to Grasshopper, as we've done in the past. So I'm going to go to Parameter, Curve, right-click, Set One Curve, and bring that in. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and hide that in Rhino, so all I can see is the Grasshopper version. Uh, then I'm going to explode that curve. So I'm going to go to Curve, Explode. Actually, let me switch my icons here. There you go. This might be a little easier. Uh, to break that down into segments, because the next step of what I want to do is, is is allow there to be a rotation at every one of these points so that this thing acts kind of like a chain, like a chain link would if we apply gravity to this. So if this is an anchor and we apply gravity and this is acting like a chain, this whole thing will kind of drop down and rotate around like a chain might. So let's go to Kangaroo and we'll get started setting up our simulation. Um, I won't get it too deep into this, uh, but as we work, you'll start to get a sense for where things are and how it works. Um, the first thing that I like to do is just grab my solver. So I'm going to go to the main tab, and you have a couple different options here. Uh, we're going to just go with the regular solver for now, uh, just the one that said solver. And we're going to leave that. Don't plug anything into that yet. We're going to kind of put that over here a bit because we're going to plug some stuff in later. Uh, the next thing we need to do is head over to goals and line and grab this line component here, or, or called length, um, length slash line. The other thing we need is a counter to that. So let's go over to goals point and grab an anchor. All right, so this is going to set our anchor. And then we need a force to apply to that, so something that could potentially mimic gravity. So we're going to go to goals point again and grab this load component here. I'm going to pop that there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is then plug in these line segments into the line input of the length component. And if we look at, if we hover over this input here, um, it's going to say the starting length will be used. This is, this is um, I'll get into what this does a little bit later. So we're going to leave that alone for now. And we're going to apply, a, I'm going to go to, to parameters and grab a panel. We'll put a strength on this just to get into the habit of it. Uh, let's just say five. In this case, it, it may not matter that much. Uh, and then I'm going to plug that into my goals. Okay, and it's going to say converged, and that's because it's already found a solution because I haven't added a force to any of this yet. The next thing that I like to do is make sure that I've got a reset and an on Boolean. So I'm going to go to parameters up top, go to input, grab a button, and also grab a number slider. Up, oh, sorry, not a number slider, a Boolean toggle. Okay, the Boolean toggle goes into the on. When false, it's off. The reset, uh, sorry, the button goes into reset, allowing us to reset the simulation as necessary. And then we'll look at that in just a second. So now we're ready to start putting in our forces. Uh, but we have to. So here we have an anchor, and here we have a load. The inputs on this are points. We need to identify which of the point which points we want to a act as an anchor, in this case I want that one, and which points we want to act uh, or we want to, be able to, we want to be able to apply the load to. It could be any one of these points, in this example, any one of these points in the system. But for the sake of, um, for the sake of this example, I'm going to use that point. So really what we need is the start and end of this curve. So let's go to curve, endpoints, grab those two points, and the start point, and I'm going to double check. Yep, the start point there 
is the one that I want to make an anchor. And so I'm going to, now what I'm going to do to add goals or add forces to this solver, I'm going to have to hold shift. Okay, and you can see how my little arrow there goes from white to green when I hold shift. So hold shift and then plug that in. And that'll allow you to, to put more than one input into the goal, op, into, the, into the solver. And then my endpoint, I'm going to plug into the load component. And I need to do one more thing before we keep going, which is to assign a direction to this load, a vector direction. And, at, it, and by default, it's setting it to the positive Z direction. But actually, I want to set it uh, to the negative Z as if it's acting something like, kind of like gravity would. So I'm going to go to vector. And I'm going to grab a Z. And then I'm going to go back to vector and reverse that. Okay, so I'm going to grab the reverse. And I can apply that. The other thing I'm going to do is just lighten up the load a little bit here. This is already at uh, uh, basically a, a magnitude of 1. I'm just going to grab a panel and just type in 0 0.1 to keep it nice and small for the sake of this example. And then I'm going to add that to my goals. Okay. Uh, now we should be ready to go. And if we go ahead and turn this Boolean to true, um, very, very quickly, we've already gotten a result. Um, let's turn that to false. And go into your perspective view. I'm just going to head into my perspective view here. And I'm going to look this way. And I just want to take a peek at what's happening. Let me uh, get situated. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, getting a little bit crazy here. Hang on. All right, good enough. And then I'm just going to reset this. You can see that line is just basically going straight. And that's because this solver uh, is computing something extremely simple, which is just to kind of take this chain and move it as if it's, been fa as if it's fallen from your hand if you were holding it here. So let's go over to the kangaroo 2 solver area again over in the main tab. Grab the bouncy solver this time, the first one there. Okay. And go ahead and plug in the reset and the boolean toggle into the same two inputs, reset and, and on. And then with your mouse hovering over this wherever all the goals are, hold control and shift and you're, you're able to take all of those inputs and add them into a new component. That's going to go red. All you got to do is reset it. And it should go gray again. And now I'll go ahead and turn that to true. And you can see that it's slowed it down just a little bit so we can actually see what's happening. So Kangaroo has a couple different options. It allows you to really quickly get to the point and solve for the condition that you've set. Or it can allow you to slow it down a little bit so you can see uh, what's happening. And now what I'm going to do also is turn these curves off. And that way, the only object I have on screen is the thing that's, that's being reacting. So again, this is just a very basic uh, example for how you can set relationships uh, between forces and how you can apply those forces to a simple geometry, in this case, just a line, a po polyline. So again, we have an anchor at the, at, the, at the starting point. We're applying a force here. And because these, these lines are now related to one another through, uh, through them being linked using this line component, it's acting like a chain would. Okay, so we're going to build on this as we move forward. Okay, so we're going to start with a new example. So what you can do in this case is you can keep this for your own reference. Uh, we can start a new file, all right, and start from scratch. And uh, I'm going to go into my top view and just draw a line between two points, a straight line. Uh, whatever length, like that. Head back into parameter, grab that, put it into grasshopper, and then hide it. Okay. And then I'm just going to work out a perspective view this, this so I don't make a mistake again. And look at that line. The next thing I'm going to do is divide that line. So I'm going to go to curve, division, divide, curve, and just break it down. By default, 10 times, that's OK. I'm then going to use these T parameters to break this line into segments by using the shatter component. So I'm going to head over to division again and grab this shatter component here. Okay. 
and then plug my T components in there. And I can turn that old preview off now and just deal with this one. So now I have uh, 10 curves instead of just one. And similar to our last example, we're gonna use uh, the same components to tr make a connection between these as if it's going to act um, like a chain, but this time we're gonna induce bending into the simulation. So we're gonna bend this line as opposed to allow it to rotate at each one of these points, kind of like some of the things you were designing last semester, bending things into new curves. So we're gonna go back to kangaroo, go to goals line, and length line once again, and go ahead and pop those in there. Uh, now in this case, the strength will matter a little bit more, so I'm gonna grab another panel. Uh, I'm gonna put in 50 into this, and uh, and, f and I'll talk a little bit later about what these numbers mean. Uh, for now, um, just understand that they're basically setting a proportion between this force and a counter force. And, and these are kind of arbitrary uh, values that we use to, to try to get behavior to come out of the simulation. So we'll go back to Kangaroo. And let's grab our bouncy solver to get that set up. Head over to parameters, grab our button and our Boolean toggle once again. It's good to do this before we keep going. All right, so that's all set. And then the next thing I need in Kangaroo is something to tell these lines to bend. And to do that, what we need to do is numerically measure the angle between each set of lines, each set of two lines, right? And we want that angle to be zero. So I'm gonna to go to goals angle and grab this angle component here. And it looks like this. Now we can't just plug these in because it's required, it w we have to give it two, two line segments. And we can do that, uh, we don't have to give it one segment here, one segment there, this could be a list, uh, but we need to make sure that we're giving it at least two inputs. So the next step is to shift all of these values by one so that the zero index goes from here to there and then I can compare those two lists all the way down the line so that I'm measuring between that line, that line, this line, that line, and so on down the line, okay? So we'll go to set, and we'll grab the shift list, and we're gonna shift all these, and by default that should say one. And then you gotta make sure that the W value here is set to false for this example. Okay, so that I hovered over W, right click, set Boolean, false. Now this, you can see when I select this, I'm only selecting those in the list. Here I select those. It's perfect. And then the last thing we need to do is get rid of the last thing there. So what we can do is um, head back into list, grab our shortest list component. And I'm kind of running out of room a little bit here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And we can compare these two lists into the shortest list in order to make them the same length. And then we can plug A into A, B into B. And then we need to set a rest angle. The rest angle is the angle it's going to look for when it's converged. You can fold things this way. Let's say you wanted to fold all these lines to 45 degrees, that you can do. Um, but we, we wanna set this to zero so it acts like a piece of wood or a, a wire for example, something you would bend when you put a force on it. And here we also need to set a strength, so I'm gonna grab another one of these and I'm gonna increase the strength of the bending forces so that they're a little bit stronger than, well, quite a bit in this case, stronger than the strength of my line so that I can actually get a bend out of it. The next thing, and this is a, a quick prototype, where we can go back into Kangaroo, go to main, and grab this grab component. Now, this is an interesting one. This allows us to use our mouse to interact with our model. So you can plug that in and plug in your goals by holding shift, like so. Turn it on, hit the reset button, uh, just for good habits. Now you can see nothing's happening and that's because we haven't applied a force. We have counter forces. We've got lines acting uh, in, in, as a sequence. We've got angles, but we need a counter force to this angle. So I'm gonna hold the, and if we hover over the grab component, it'll tell you, uh, it used to, sorry, it used to tell you, uh, but now it doesn't. But anyway, you can go in to Rhino, and as you can see, I've already, oh, you don't even have to, 
Oh, nice. In, uh, in Rhino 2.5, you can just start clicking. In your version of, of, of Kangaroo, um, sorry, Kangaroo 2.5, in your version of Kangaroo, you have to hold the Alt key and uh, grab one of those, those vertices or those points. And uh, I have a, of course, I've got a, a, a twin on screen, so I'm going to turn off all of that stuff so that all disappears and just use my mouse to interact with our object on screen. And you can see that as I place a force, especially if I go fast, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this thing around, but it's acting like, let's say, a piece of wire might act when you, when you, um, when you move it up and down using your hand. Um, or, or if you were, uh, if this were a long piece of thin wood and you were holding it above your head, and you move to your arm up and down, it may do something like this. So you can see now that in the, in the previous example, um, we only had spring forces and a, and, a, and a gravity force. In this case, we don't have gravity, but we have an angle force, which is giving us an entirely different physics. And the physics here is that are, are those of bending. Pretty cool. Um, and uh, while you're in here <coughs> playing with this, change your, feel free to change your inputs. Here, what we've done is we've weakened the the length. Uh, we weakened the springs between the points, allowing this force to be much stronger, relatively speaking. Which now we get much less bending. Let's drop this down to one, increase this to 15, and then try again. Now you can see we have the opposite thing happening. The bending forces are very weak, and I'm able to now induce some rotation at those at those points, but eventually, without a force applied, it will eventually find its place. It's gonna work harder to basically find that to be true, which is our rest angles in between the lines. So you can see the relationship between the forces, and I'm gonna equal them out, which gives us a pretty nice bending action. Okay, so we're gonna build on this now to create uh, build on this logic, I should say, not exactly this file, but we're going to build on this logic to build a, a grid shell structure, a, a kind of a live bent or, or actively bent grid shell structure, kind of like what some of you looked at last semester. Okay, we're going to start with a new file once again. And this time uh, we're going to start with something three-dimensional. Um, so what I'm going to go, I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to make a rectangle first, uh, to start drawing out my, my grid shell structure. Okay. So I'm going to head over to curve. I'm going to grab that primitive rectangle and I'm just going to kind of move a little bit quickly through this. So I'm going to go to math. I'm going to build a domain between zero and 20, for example and plug that into my X and my Y. And I'm just gonna, gonna grab a mesh plane. So I'm gonna go to mesh, primitive, plane. Plug the, my rectangle into the boundary there. And my my width and uh, the W and the H here, it's not necessarily width and height, but it is the number of faces in each direction. I'm gonna increase that to 15 to give this a little bit more resolution. You can see that we now have more, more uh, mesh faces, all right? And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is set myself up for the, the kind of bending, uh, how we're gonna bend this grid shell into a new configuration. And the way I'm going to do that is to scale the corner points toward the center. Okay, so what I'm going to do is head over to curve, grab this polygon center. This is going to give me a center point of my rectangle. We can use this last one here as the centroid. Uh, and then I'm going to head over to transform and grab the, uh, let's see, where is it here? Yep, scale, sorry, couldn't find it. Uh, grab the scale component. And the geometry that we're scaling are the corner points of our mesh. 
Okay, so a couple different ways to do that, but I'll, I'll go with this version. I'll go over to uh, Kangaroo mm -hmm. again and um, head to Utility. Nope, head to Mesh. Grab Mesh Corners and grab those corners here like that. And then I'm going to plug those four things, all those points into the, the uh, G input there. The center is then going to be the centroid of my rectangle, which I can turn off. And then I just need a slider between 0 and 1 as a scaling factor. Okay, and you can see the points moving toward the center. Uh, in order to see that a little bit better, I'm going to go to display. I'm going to grab this dot component and um, change its size so that it's a little smaller. There we go. This is kind of cool because now we can identify exactly where our anchors are at any, at any time. Okay. So that gets me set up for what my anchors are going to end up doing. I'm going to push this down here to make some room for the next set of steps. All right, I'm going to head back to Kangaroo. And I'm going to grab the, the solver. Uh, you can grab whichever one you want. If you want to see it go a little slower, grab bouncy. I'm going to use the regular solver for this one because it's going to do some more, some more computing and it may go a little slower anyway. Uh, so that's my regular solver. And then I'm going to go to goals point, grab an anchor. And we're going to set these points as our anchors. And I'm going to drop that in there. All right. Okay. The next thing then is to, and this is going to be very common for almost every simulation, you're going to need to, anything that has lines at least, you're going to need to uh, set as, as springs or as lines uh, with uh, a variable length. So we'll go back to goals, grab our length component, and you can see the output here is spring, which is why I keep calling it that. Um, so in case you're getting confused. And uh, we need to extract then all of these lines from this mesh and turn them into springs. And uh, one way to do that is to use Weaver Bird, which should be installed on your machines. If not, I could show you a workaround. Uh, but hopefully you have this installed from previous uh, assignments. And we're going to extract the mesh edges like this. We can turn that off now and just look at those for now. Put those in there. And we can, again, leave that blank. When we do tension and fabrics, this will have to change. But for now, since we're bending, we want that to stay the same. Uh, we're going to give that a strength of 25 for now to get started, see how that works. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and plug that in to goals. OK. And I'm going to turn off that component, or turn off the preview. OK. The last thing, then, is to add the bending forces. Um, and instead of the method we used last time, which was to basically measure the angle between all these, that's harder to do in this three-dimensional three or two-dimensional lattice because we'd have to measure all these as well, the, the, uh, the adjacencies. And that is possible, but it's a little bit cumbersome. This is why we started with a mesh. What we can do with a mesh is actually um, we can just measure the angles between the actual mesh faces, not necessarily the mesh lines. And that's easier to do. It's a little faster and gives us uh, good results. But the first thing is, is we have to triangulate this mesh. So I'm going to head over to mesh and find our uh, triangulate. It's over in utilities under triangulate. And I'm going to draw those diagonals. And you can see now that I've drawn a series of triangles where even though we started with quads. Okay. And uh, I can turn that I can turn that off. The next thing is to head back over to Kangaroo and head into Mesh. And we need to um, create hinge points for every one of those triangular sets of faces. Every single set possible will be measured and forced to stay zero by applying the next step, which is the, uh, the hinge force. And I think this is in goals mesh, yes. So goals mesh hinge. And it's going to ask you for fold start, fold end, tip, and so on. All you need to do is just connect across one, two, three, four, like so. And the rest angle, again, is going to be 0. Okay. 
And then we can set a strength that we can update later. Uh, I'm going to set that to 10 for now. And we can see how that goes. And I'm going to put this close to my other my other strength value, and I'm going to put a little group around it so I, I can go back to these as the simulation is running and change them if I don't like the results. And then I'm going to add this by holding shift once again into here. Now let's also, because we made a topological change, we need to reset it and grab that Boolean toggle in case you want to turn it off. And that's a, a good idea as you set things up. Okay, we, we should have everything we need to simulate this. So let's go ahead and turn it on. If for whatever reason your scale factor at this point is not one, you need to go back, make sure that it's one at the beginning of this simulation. So if it were at zero point whatever, put it back to one and then click reset. And I'll explain why in just a second. But because I was already at one, I'm gonna go ahead and change this. Oops, we have a mistake, one second. Okay, yes, yeah, so I, I made a mistake in between the two versions of Kangaroo. Um, in, uh, we're gonna see if, uh, how this goes uh, in 2.4, but I believe you have to do this. Uh, in the newer versions, you need to set a target to where the anchor is going and refer back to where the anchor was. Um, if you're seeing this T input, uh, if you're seeing something that says index um, then you don't have to do this next step. But if you are seeing index, what you need to do is take the original points here, our corner points, put those into the P input, and um, drop our moved points into the T input. Okay, So that solves the anchor problem. The next thing that I realized I forgot to do is to replace the input into the into the weaver bird edges with the new mesh that we drew. So remember that we triangulated this mesh when we added these diagonal fold, uh, folds, when we added these diagonal faces. That mesh has to be plugged into the edges so that all the edges, and I've already started simulating, so that all the edges are part of the simulation. If we bypass those diagonals, we'll get a very weird uh, and, and uh, bad result. Okay, so just to kind of clarify that, from the triangulation, the input M goes into, G, or the output M goes into the G input of mesh edges and also into the mesh points that we did before. Okay, and uh, I also suggest dropping the hinge force down a little bit. So now I have a 25 5 ratio, as you can see on my screen here. Okay, that should clear, uh, clear that up. Now if we turn this uh, back on and start scaling down a little bit, we should be seeing something happening. And if you're seeing the, the structure going downward in space into the Z, uh, the negative Z, what we can do is add this floor component. So you can head back to Kangaroo and go to the goals point tab up at the top there and grab the floor component as you'll see here okay so that floor component will fix that problem and let's see if it happens yeah so mine goes downward if I add the floor it'll bounce back up okay very nice and I'm still seeing a bunch of points here so I want to kind of turn some stuff off uh, I'm still seeing all the hinge points. That makes it a little harder to visualize. And now that I've turned that off, I can grab this and form my grid shell. And then you can go back, since things are working pretty nicely, start changing these values a bit, see what happens, just to experiment. So if we make those lines a little weaker, um, they might inflate a little bit more. You might get a little more curvature out of it. Let me see if I can show that in the front view. Yeah. Let's play around with some forces there. There we go. So this will kind of even it out a little bit, make the material a little stronger, much less elastic. Still standing. Can't really break it. And in our hinge forces, if we increase those, this may actually, ah, 
Nice, yeah. So we end up actually getting, again, uh, a slightly different curvature out of this. Quite nice. Now, if you take a look at the, I'm going to bring that back down a bit. Let's take a look at the top view. You might notice that it's asymmetrical. The reason is, is that you've got diagonal forces that are not being, uh, there's no counter force to that, that for that direction. It's all in the same direction. Um, there is a way to fix that, and I can show you real quick. Uh, it's not mandatory. This is kind of extra. Uh, I think we've covered bending and its basics, but I'll just show you one way to kind of equalize that a little bit. So I'm going to go back, crank this back to one, and head back over to this component. And we're going to replace this with the Weaver Bird Stellate component. So I'm going to go to Weaver Bird, Transform, Stellate, and plug that in. Now, by default, you're going to get this crazy spiky mesh to, uh, to be drawn. Uh, we can get rid of that by adding a Z, or sorry, a zero input into the D there. And what we've now done is we've created, uh, I guess, a, uh, an X brace between each one of those mesh faces, which is a little more stable. So now we can just replace that. We can turn that mesh off. Hit the reset button to update our topology and simulate. And it looks like it's it's acting a little bit differently. Um, it really kind of had a lot of stress down down there. So we're going to increase. I'm going to try that again. And I'm going to increase these these hinge forces something higher just to see if that solves it. We'll find out. Mm. No, no, not necessarily. In fact, maybe I'll drop those back down pretty low again. Bring these up. See what that does. Yeah, not much better. Let's bring those down. And maybe try to just get these a little closer to one another. Yeah, and this is just I'm showing you this because this is the typical process of using kangaroo. You find something that starts to work, find a couple of uh, anomalies with it, and see if you can kind of massage those values a bit so that you can get a smoother simulation. At the end of the day, what you're looking for really is the final result. And as long as it finds it and converges, as long as this component goes to converge, uh, oftentimes what you've created then is a uh, successful simulation. And let's look at the top view again. And you can see now that it's very symmetrical. It's quite, quite nicely formed with this now that these uh, meshes have been drawn as they have been. Okay, so that's some of the basics of bending, um, bending material and forming uh, grid shell structures in kangaroo. Um, the one last thing that I will also show if you're, if you're wondering why we're not seeing the mesh, um, the reason is that we haven't simulated those faces yet and there is no real way to do that. Uh, but what you can do is use this, go back to kangaroo, go to main, use the show component, which has a light bulb and we can plug our, where is it, up top here, we can plug our mesh into that G input there and then add this to our goals. And what that will do is it'll bring that back, it'll bring that mesh back and redraw it after, uh, after the simulation or during the simulation. So we can drop that back to zero and you can see that it's now a part of a simulation. Very nice. Enjoy.